the memory of the holy new hieromata and equal to the apostles, Cosmas of Etolia. Saint Cosmas was born in a small village called Megadendron in the Diocese of Arta in about 1714. His parents, simple and devout people, brought him up in the fear of God and love of the scriptures. At about the age of 20, he went to the holy mountain of Athos to study at the academy, which had been founded as a dependency of the monastery of Vatopedi, where the famous Evgenios Bulgaris was teaching. But the reactions provoked by the founding of this establishment, which spread the spirit of enlightenment in the very heart of the citadel of orthodoxy, quickly forced Bulgaris and other eminent professors to leave Athos, and the academy very soon fell into decline. This was for the young Cosmas a sign of providence, and turning his back on his studies, he embraced the monastic life in the monastery of Philotheu, where his zeal for ascetic striving and his devotion made him worthy to be ordained priest shortly after his monastic profession. The blessed man had from his youth a great desire to spread the word of God around him to such a degree that he said that the salvation of his brethren was devouring him as a grub eats away a tree from inside. In these difficult times for the oppressed Greek people, ignorance of the rudiments of the faith and of Christian culture led to the neglect and decline of morals, so that the preaching of the gospel clearly became the most important part. But, warned by the teaching of the fathers, Cosmas did not want to engage in apostolic life through his own will. Desiring to learn if this was God's will, he randomly opened the Holy Scriptures one day and his eyes lit on these words of the Apostle, let no man seek his own, but every man another's. Thus, enlightened by the word of God, and after having taken counsel of the fathers of the holy mountain, he went to Constantinople to receive the blessing of Patriarch Seraphim II and to take a few lessons in rhetoric from his cousin, Archimandrite Chrysanthus, who was later to become the director of the Patriarchal Academy and the then school of Naxos. The new apostle began his preaching ministry in the churches around Constantinople and pushed on into the eastern parts of Greece. Then he returned to Constantinople. After having withdrawn to Athos for a time, he received authorization from Patriarch Sophronius II to go and preach in the Cyclades in order to console the people who had been discouraged by the failure of an uprising brought about by Russia. He returned thence to make a retreat in the monasteries, thus completing 17 years of life on the holy mountain. But his heart burning with love for his brethren would not allow him to stay there. He therefore left for Thessalonica, stayed briefly in Beroria and traveled throughout Macedonia gathering great crowds of the faithful who listened to him with contrition. From Kefalonia, he went to the island of Zakynthos and then on to Corfu, going thence to Epirus. There he found that Christianity was in a parlous state and he confirmed the Orthodox faith there and put a stop to the people's conversion to Islam. Helped by God's grace, Saint Cosmas worked wonders in these regions, which have to this day remained impregnated with echoes of his preaching. Through his exhortations, he succeeded in restoring a Christian way of life to the people. His words were simple, able to be understood by all, using images and expressions taken from everyday life, but they were also full of gentleness, peace, and joy that can only be the gift of the Holy Spirit. They had the virtue of penetrating straight to the souls of his hearers and immediately being received with enthusiasm as the expression of the will of God. 
as no church would have been able to contain the crowds that gathered round the new apostle, he preached in the open air, standing on a portable platform beside a great cross that had been stuck in the ground and which, after he had left, became a source of healing and consolation for both bodily and spiritual ills. He taught the Christians to live according to Christ's commandments and to observe Sunday, the Lord's Day, setting aside their everyday work to go to church and hear the word of God. Wherever he went, he founded schools, a task that he considered fundamental for the teaching of Greek and the Holy Scriptures. He persuaded the rich to devote their surplus to almsgiving and the distribution of devotional books, icons and prayer ropes, but also urged them to donate baptisseries to the churches for the baptism of children. A crowd of two or three thousand of the faithful followed him everywhere, becoming a veritable army of Christ that travelled through the whole of Albania, following the saint, looking on him as Enoch or the prophet Elias, who had come to proclaim the dawn of a new age. Before beginning his preaching, he would celebrate Vespers or a Paraklisi to the Mother of God. Then, after having spoken, he left it to the 50 or so priests who accompanied him to continue his work by the hearing of confessions, the celebration of the office of the Holy Unction, of Holy Communion, and personal visits to each person. Although the saint's preaching had no polemical content, confining itself to the teaching of the evangelical virtues, and also by virtue of his having appeared before the Pasha of Ioannina and had received great honour from him, certain Jews, excited by jealousy and furious ever since the saint had made them hold their Sunday markets on a Saturday, persuaded the Pasha to put an end to his life. Cosmas had formed the habit on arriving in an area in which he desired to preach of going personally to ask the blessing of the local bishop and then sending one of his disciples to ask permission of the Turkish civil authorities. Arriving one day near the Albanian village of Golikonstanti, he learned that the Pasha of the region, Kurt Pasha, lived not far away at Berati. Despite the urgings of those around him to prudence, the saint decided to go himself and seek authorization to preach from the local official who made it known to him that he had received orders to hand him over to Kurt Pasha. On hearing these words, Saint Cosmas realized that the moment had come to crown his work with martyrdom and he gave thanks to Christ for having counted him worthy of such an honor. The next day, 24th of August, 1779, seven soldiers took him under escort on the pretext of sending him to Kurt Pasha, but after two hours on the road, they stopped by River Paso and told him that he had already been sentenced to death by execution. The saint, filled with joy and thanksgiving to God, blessed the four corners of the universe with the sign of the cross and prayed for the salvation of all Christians. He refused to have his hands tied so that he could cross them and it was without offering the least resistance that he was hanged on a tree and gloriously gave his soul into God's keeping. He was then 65 years old. The Christians who had rushed to gather the saint's body, thrown into the river by his executioners, into their nets, were left empty-handed. But a priest called Mark, being armed with prayer, discovered the precious relics three days later. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, equipped with faith in Christ as invincible weapon. O Cosmas, thou didst conquer thy foes in the battle, and wetting thy blessed words as a gleaming and sharpened blade, thou didst break through all the snares of Belial's cunning, and didst cut out the 
at the root of ungodly opinions by wielding the spirit sword. After sowing the seed of true piety in souls, and having watered it richly with sweat and tears and travails, thou abundantly didst reap a harvest of the saved, whom thou didst offer unto Christ, and with whom thou dost rejoice, O wise Cosmas, in the heavens, being shown forth as an equal of the apostles in thy way of life. As we gather in thy church with joy and gladness to revere thy radiant travails and struggles for the faith, O Cosmos, cover us with your prayers from every danger and sickness and suffering. O Pyromartyr of Christ, intercede on our behalf. Thou as a genuine and blameless priest of the Most High who served him aright, and peer of apostles, didst peer through the night of ignorance with orthodoxy's light, guiding all to repentance, and saving knowledge of Christ the Lord, who has magnified thy memorial. O higher martyr of Christ, intercede on our behalf. Thou hast bequeathed thy life of virtue unto all, O Cosmas, servant of Christ, to be an example to aesthetics, unto priests, and unto martyrs for the faith. For those seeking salvation need to take no other honouring guide than the life in Christ thou hast sh shown to us. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, taking their master's cross upon thy shoulders thou didst bear it all of thy life, and through its divine might thou didst work amazing wonders for those seeking thee with faith which employ now O Cosmos, for us who run to thy sympathy, that we might escape from the foes of souls. Saint of God, intercede for us, and kindled as a shining torch, with the bright beams of the Spirit, thou didst issue like a river from Athos, streaming forth ablaze with light from the devil's darkness fled, and unto which the faithful ran to receive succor for their souls. Higher martyr of Christ, intercede on our behalf. Wisely did thou enlighten all to weigh their love by their actions, and to test their love for God through their neighbor, teaching all to make their love for God more firm and genuine, through his mercy to his image, which is the touchstone of love divine. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, when thou wast purified thy mind, through cease the doing of virtue, thou wast given wings to soar up to heaven, serving as a blameless priest, and making Christ known unto all, who as thy last oblation did pour thy blood out in sacrifice. Now Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, burning with the quenchless fire of love for neighbor, and desire that all be saved. Thou didst lay down thy life in toils to show thy neighbor the Savior Christ, who crowned thy labors of love with a martyr's crown. Taking the saving cross of Christ upon your shoulders valiantly, you routest bountiful wonders through its invincible power, healing the sick and casting out the demons from men's souls and ways, and last deplating for thyself the shining crown of a martyr, O Cosmas, peer of apostles. 
as with divine thunders thou didst proclaim with blameless faith and with thy signs as lightnings thou didst scatter the darkness of ignorance and error and vice and disease bringing all to the trinity now as thou standest in boldness before his throne intercede that we might all be saved let thy mercy o lord be upon us according as we have hoped in you the firm foundation supporting thy holy preaching was love thine every word and discourse was borne out by thy labors the seal of all thy teachings and venerable toils was the rope wound about thy neck which thou o cause must it freely receive with joy as a shepherd dying for